Hello everyone and welcome to a new video MC Mora here and in today's video I wanted to talk about zoning and how you can get better at zoning. Zoning is a difficult thing to do in fighting games especially modern fighting games. It requires a lot of finesse and a lot of deep understanding of spacing. Generally I don't consider myself to be a good zoning player but I do think I have at least some understanding of how the fireball theory work and how you can generally zone your opponents. I'm gonna start with a traditional zoner per se, a character like Ryu because he have a fireball, a traditional fireball and then I'm gonna move on to a character like Poison who is an untraditional zoner and we will check out how both of them can actually function. Let's start with Ryu and let's start about the fireball. Let's start talking about the fireballs. Generally speaking, when you want a, to talk about a zoning character, you want to have a really slow fireball or a really fast one. And allow me to tell you what is the idea behind each of them. A slower fireball will take more time to travel to your opponent. So for example, from the round start distance, if I do my light punch fireball, I am plus 13. If I do my heavy fireball, I am plus 7. Why is that? Well, it's because the fireball takes time to travel to my opponent, right? As the hitbox of the fireball is moving, because the light is slower, he will block it later, which means that I will be at a more plus frames, right? So the light fireball is more plus when it is blocked. Generally, you want to throw a fireball. The idea behind throwing fireballs is triggering a reaction from your opponent. When I'm throwing a fireballs like that, I'm not doing any real damage. If you notice, it will take me like a hundred fireballs to ship you. That's nothing. I don't want that. What I do want is the following. I want to throw a fireball, I want him to jump, and I want to uppercut him. That's how I get my damage, right? That's how you get the damage. That is ideally what you want. Or you want to do something like a light punch fireball, he dashes, you get the check and you get the damage. You want to trigger a reaction from your opponent, right? So what is the use of the light fireball? Why is it good? And why is the heavy fireball good? Generally because the light is your more plus on block on the light fireball, you get to create fireball traps and you get to move. So for example, from the same distance, we will now set Ryu to jump, right? If I'm doing too heavy fireball, this fireball got jumped. I actually get hit here. But if I do a light fireball into a heavy fireball, I can anti-air him. Right? This gives me more frame advantage. So for example, if we did the same sequence again, two heavies, a Shoryuken will get blocked. A sure you can anti air it. This is the main difference between the light and the heavy. That's why it is better to throw the light. But is it always better? Not really. The light have its issue as well, and that's why you also need the heavy. The heavy fireball is harder to react to. From this distance, for example, because the heavy will contact the opponent way faster, he is much more likely to be unable to block. So if I'm from this distance and I'm throwing the light fireball, this is gonna get blocked. 99% of the opponents will block that one. But the heavy, as you can see, it will be harder for him to block. And like I said, we want to trigger a reaction from our opponent. That reaction could be jump, it could be dash or it could be walk. So let's for example set out another situation. I am full screen, right? I am at full I'm at a full screen distance. Let's say the opponent is trying to dash. So if I throw two light fireballs, the opponent can very comfortably dash up and block the next fireball. He has no issue. But if I do a light into a heavy, for example, he will get hit. Even from full screen, if I do heavy to heavy, he will get hit because the heavy travels faster. So think of it that way. If you think that your opponent is gonna jump, light fireballs are good because your next fireball will pretty much be safe. If your opponent likes to walk up to you, the heavy fireball is good because they will not be able to walk forward without blocking, right? Because they'll have to block earlier, so the distance they're gonna walk is gonna be less, and it will be harder for them 
to dash. Let's check out another example. If I am fighting my opponent Ryu, Ryu now will neutral jump and then do a light fireball. I'm gonna try to walk forward as soon as Ryu lands and let's check out the distance I will be able to move with the light fireball and the distance I will be able to move with the heavy fireball. So he's gonna backdash twice, neutral jump. After his neutral jump, I'm gonna move forward, right? So if we check this out, I am standing on the line. Let's do it again. I'm standing on the line. My feet is on the line, right? But what happened if he did the heavy fireball? If you check this out, I am way behind the line. So while the heavy fireball is slower, I can't walk forward and block and get longer distances. Light punch fireball will allow me to walk and block and get closer to my opponent. While the heavy fireball well, they can't walk that much of a distance. So zoning is all about understanding what your opponent likes to do. If your opponent likes to walk forward and block, walk forward and block, and all of that, you might want to consider heavy fireballs. If your opponent likes to jump or take actions that might require some commitment, maybe the light one is better. And that is the theory. It's all about mix-ups. It's all about reading your opponent. Honestly, it's a mix-up, just like a grappler mix-up. You want to think, okay, maybe my opponent likes to jump, so I'm going to throw a light fireball here, and then when he jumps, I will be ready to check him. Or maybe let's check out the same sequences again. Maybe like he will jump here, so I will check him. Or he is going to dash here. I'm going to check him with the light. But if, he did, if I did the heavy... I will not be able to walk forward and get that. So another very good example of light punch fireballs is the fact that you can also move yourself. A big part of zoning is actually taking this distance. When you're th many players, especially newcomers, will like to rush away and just throw fireballs. And this is awful. You don't want to do that. Never actually do that. What you want to do is you want to move forward. Throw the light fireball and give yourself some distance. Give yourself some breathing room right the light fireball basically bought you some space if your opponent stood and blocks this now you have gained yourself some space so in conclusion you want to use the heavy fireball if they like to walk forward and block light fireballs are good because they give you the most frame advantage right this means that if your opponent blocks that fireball your next action will most likely be safe and you get to move right and that is pretty much how traditional fireball work. I will say the medium ones are typically not that useful because they are kind of middle of the road. You don't really get the benefits of having a slow fireball to gain distance or frame advantage. And you don't get the benefits of a fast fireball so you get to stop them from walking and blocking. So I wouldn't actually use medium fireballs with Ryu at all. I would just use the light and the heavy. That's all you need. Also, many players, especially up and coming players, like to use EX Fireball from long distance. This is really lame. I wouldn't also suggest doing that at all. You want to use it from a close distance like that so that it is unreactable. Right? And now we will move on to another character, Light Poison, and show you how these same concepts apply. So let's talk for a bit now about unconventional zoners. These are characters who don't really rely on a fireball for zoning. Characters like Poison, like Dulcim, like Falk, Minat to an extent. These characters don't really have a traditional fireball like the Shotos or Gael or Sagat to really zone with. They have to rely on other tools, usually long range attack. Poison for example, her main zoning tool is the medium heart rate. And what you will notice is that, first of all, this is doing good damage. It does 100 damage, 150 stun. That's a lot. It's a lot compared to the traditional fireball that does 50 or 60 damage. So this is actually one of its uses. You will find that if we trade with Ed here, he is doing 50 damage and we are doing 100. So the trade is obviously in Poison's favor. Dulcim have a lot of attacks that can go under fireballs. He himself have a teleport, so he can punish fireballs. Minat have a reflect. Falk can absorb or go under. Many of these characters have way 
to kind of force their game plan on the traditional zoners, right? So again, let's talk first about the medium raid and its uses. When you're doing medium raid from poison, it, it, it's kind of a multiple layers. There is multiple layers to this. And like we said earlier, first of all, a hit is really good, but if it happened to get blocked, what are the actions that you're expecting from your opponent, right? First of all, from a distance like that, maybe they will try to dash forward, right? This is always minus six when it gets blocked, right? So regardless of the distance, this is minus six, right? So your opponent might want to do one of the following. They might try to dash, right? So let's say here Ed is trying to dash forward after blocking it. I can't do two of them in a row, right? It's too slow for that. So, but if I'm losing poison and I'm doing the medium rate from this distance, I am expecting my opponent to dash. Maybe Ed will dash here, right? So what you do here is a, a, a buffer, something like a standing medium kick. This is designated pretty much to shake the forward movement, right? Maybe you will do something like the standing light kick and or maybe here, standing light kick and buffer into EX event line. These are really good options. And you can also do something completely boldy and just go for a heavy kick. I can do that if I'm expecting also the forward movement. However, you also have to consider that your opponent might try to jump. So for example, if Ed here is jumping, and if I do my heavy kick, I got jumped on. But if I did my light kick buffer, I still anti-air, right? So again, it is the same concepts pretty much, but just in different flavors. You're doing an attack, you are baiting an action, and then you are punishing it. For someone like Poison, for example, maybe your opponent will try to walk backwards, right? So maybe Ed here will try to walk back. Which is fine, a lot of players will try to walk back on poison, right? So after a heart raid, you might want to try to do something like the crouching heavy punch. Many poison players like to use this for zoning. I think this is the main use of the crouching heavy punch is to shaking people walking back out of your medium heart rate, right? It's not to shake them walking forward. If you want to shake forward movement, you have the light kick, medium kick and heavy kick. So, in all honesty, the concepts are pretty similar. So, how do these character work for opponents who like to walk forward? We saw, we said that for a character like Ryu, they want to use their heavy punch fireball, the fast Hadoukens, to pretty much contest with people who like to walk and block. So, how can someone like Poison do that? Well, let's say, for example, Ed here is going to walk forward and block, right? So, Ed is going to walk and block. It can be really hard for me if I'm trying to zone him, right? He can just walk forward and block. Walk forward and block. And I'm, 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 I'm kind of unable to zone him, right? I'm not getting anywhere. So what you can do with these characters is obviously a move that will kind of force your opponent into action. Again, for example, in a poison situation, they give her this heart rate pretty much for this sequence. Okay, your opponent is walking forward and blocking. You force them into a plus situation, right? And then it is your turn. Dalsim gets to do the EX Fireball. Minat gets to do her Orb and Orb Reflect. Pretty much, these mechanics, the, the, the idea that these zoning characters get plus on block frames, or ways to force plus frames, that is to combat walking and blocking, right? If your opponent walking and blocking too much, well, come here, baby, and I'm gonna grab you, right? This is basically how zoning kinda works. I hope that I was able to at least shed some light on how it works. I know it's a complicated, it's a complicated concept, and it, it it takes some time to understand how it works and how you should fight against it. And I hope that this video at least gave you some understanding of how the whole process kind of works on the different type of characters. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like or a comment. It helps the channel so much. Please consider checking out the Discord server. It is really really cool. Also consider supporting me of Patreon if you enjoy this content. Subscribe if you haven't. Again, thanks very much for watching and stay safe.